Hi everyone, welcome back and thank you for joining us for our last webinar of July, but not to worry, we've got a whole lineup of August. Uh, my name is Samia Siddiqui and joining me today are our hosts from RBC, there's uh, Trisha. Hi Trisha. Hi. And Akshita. Hi. So they'll be talking about building your network in Canada and um, they're from this exciting new venture from RBC called Arrive and I'll let them talk about it more. Thanks so much. Um, we're really excited to join um, Access today and talk about one of our favorite topics, networking. It's really great to know that uh, about 50-50, there's a 50-50 split between people who are uh, employed and those who are unemployed because this topic is really applicable to both parties and we really hope that by the end of this presentation you'll see that um, networking is what we believe to be the key to opening career doors. So um, before we get started I'll let Akshita um, tell us about what to expect but a little bit first about us. Uh, my name is Trisha Jose. I'm one of the co-founders of a platform called Arrive which I'll describe a little bit later um, and we, I work with Akshita at RBC Ventures. Uh, but Akshita is also one of our Arrive ambassadors, so I'll let her introduce herself as well. Um, hi everyone, I'm Akshita. I'm a manager at um, the Applied Analytics and Partnership team in RBC Ventures. Really excited to be here and talk to you today. Awesome. And so on the next slide, we'll just go over exactly what to expect um, for, this, for this webinar. So in this webinar, we'll start off with an introduction to Arrive and then move, move on to the importance of networking. Um, talk a bit about how to make connections and finishing off with the best practices and some Q&A. Awesome. So before we launch into why networking is so important, we thought we'd share a little bit about Arrive, which is on our next slide. Um, and so you heard Sonia describe, um, and if we go to the next slide, um, we heard Sonia describe that we're from RBC. So you may be wondering what is Arrive? What is our relationship with RBC? Um, so RBC is uh, the largest bank in Canada and has had a long standing mandate to support newcomers. And so Arrive is one of many initiatives focused on going beyond banking. Um, and so we're really excited to be doing this with this amazing organization. Um, and our mission from day one was really to reimagine newcomer assistance and challenge the current path to success. Um, all, all in all, opening new doors of opportunity that accelerate a newcomer's ability to make Canada home. So we really want to create a platform that set uh, newcomers up for success in Canada, supporting them in whatever makes sense. So when we started Arrive, what we did was we spent a lot of time with newcomers, trying to understand how we can innovate, but also collaborate with amazing existing players like Access Today. And so when we spoke with a lot of newcomers, we realized that there's so many pain points um, along the journey, but one that came up time and time again is finding a job in the desired field of work or getting back into that desired field of work. Um, of course, we know finding a job is a key economic um, aspect of success in Canada. And so we realized that one of the barriers to being able to do that was not having the right um, Canadian networks in place. Um, and something that we discovered was that successful employment of newcomers was actually linked to the diversity of their, of their networks. Um, and so we realized that this was a critical piece that we really wanted to harp on and, and why we're talking about it with you today. So Arrive, um, Arrive Connections, which is the, the screenshot that you see in the slide, um, is actually our first initiative towards supporting newcomers, focused specifically on careers and building networks. And so what you do is you fill out a, um, a profile after you sign up that tells you about tells us about your interests and the industry that you work in. And then every week we'll curate connections of people that we think you should be connected to. So whether it's peers who are like you that can support um, you in your career search or even um, beyond career in life, um, as well as people who are successful newcomers that are allies. Um, we allow you to chat with them on the platform and we hope that that will lead to a lot of meaningful connections uh, both on the platform and off the platform. So that is kind of our first initiative, but we hope that this is the first of many, many tools um, really focused on, on helping newcomers succeed in Canada. Um, but of course, we really love networking and so that's going to be the topic of our, of our conversation today. Awesome. So moving on to the next slide, um, we'll talk about the basics of networking, um, some do's and don'ts, some efficient way to network better, offline and offline events and in online uh, networking sites as well. Great. So 
if you didn't uh, if you didn't hear it from us earlier, networking is so important, and we cannot stress that in, enough. Um, on this slide, we've just listed a couple a couple statistics that we think will bring to light just how important it is. Um, so the first one you can see 57% of jobs are filled through a networking contact, and that's because. 75% of jobs are not posted online. In Canada, there's something known as the hidden job market, where jobs are not posted online, but they are very much available and exist. For me, how I got to RBC and RBC Ventures was completely through word of mouth, and it was a, a hidden job as well. There was nothing posted about it online, but someone that I knew and trusted reached out to me, connected me with an individual, um, and that's kind of how I got started here. And you'll hear from Akshita later that she has had a similar experience as well. Um, and then finally, 80% of professionals consider networking to be important to career success. So across the board in North America, networking is a really important skill. And we hope that through this presentation, you'll be able to, to see that as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, Trisha, I, I had the same experience. Um, my the job at RBC Ventures right now is through networking. I was uh, really a co-op and then I was looking for a full-time job and there was no official posting anywhere. I started talking to people in analytics, at Ventures, at RBC, other you know companies and the spot just opened up and I was like, yeah, this sounds great. Let's just do it. That's awesome. Yeah. But I think networking is um, an art and a science. And so it's not just something that you just do all of a sudden, you should prepare. So I think you'll be talking about that next. Yeah. So even before you, so the, moving on to the next slide, um, even before you start networking, it's important to put in some upfront work and you can start doing that by polishing your online presence. So online um, networking is really different from, you know, meeting people at events or meeting people in small coffee chats or something, because um, when you, when you meet somebody, the person will get to know you after they start talking to you. But when you're meeting, when you're reaching out to somebody on social networking uh, websites, is basically just what they see on your profile. So it's really important to polish your online presence. Um, one of the examples would be LinkedIn. It's a very popular um, professional networking website, and you can start off just by commenting on the posts that you really are passionate about, or you know the topics that you're passionate about. Uh, like, like start liking those articles or start following people that you believe are amazing leaders or they resonate with what you believe uh, would be uh, would be success for you um, also it's important to know uh, what you what do you want out of this networking uh, any networking session or event like um, you need to have specific goals and objective objectives in place otherwise uh, because otherwise you won't get a uh, hundred percent out of the meeting um, and when you start networking, it's important to do your homework and your research when you before you start meeting people. It shows that you are really committed and it also prepares you well for the meeting because you can talk about common projects, um, common interests or the things that you did and the, and the person right now is interested in. So yeah, it will help you a lot. And after all these events, offline events and online um, uh, meetings, it's important to, you know, take a step back and reflect on what you did. Uh, do an audit. See what went wrong, what well, worked well for you. How can you make it better? As Trisha said, it's not a one-time thing. It's an iterative process. So every, you'll, you'll get better uh, with every networking event, every, every meeting. Awesome. Um, and you might be wondering where you can put these skills into practice. So on the next slide, we've just outlined a couple um, a couple places where you can actually network. Um, and so we'll cover the skills necessary for each of these items in a few slides later. But the first place, uh, I think Akshita mentioned it, was networking sites. Sites like LinkedIn, even sites like Arrive. Um, these are great places to meet people, and that's why it's so important to have uh, a good online presence of yourself because that is the first point of contact anyone will ever have with you. Um, so we'll, we'll tackle online networking in a second, but moving on, we also can network at professional organizations. So if you belong to um, a specific accreditation or you have a specific professional industry that you work in, this is a great way to meet like-minded people. Um, there are a lot of incredible organizations across Ontario um, that you can really um, get involved with. And then there's a lot of events and meetups that you can go and network with people who are like-minded, uh, such as yourself. 
in the case that you are you know not quite sure you're looking to transfer careers or you're looking to uh, move into an industry that is a little bit different than it was back home you can also check out more general websites like meetup um, and there you can find other um, organizations that are focused around different skills, different industries, different disciplines. And that's a great way to um, meet people who are like-minded with you, um, network, learn from each other, and then hopefully it will open a, a door of opportunity in the future. The third item on this list, volunteer opportunities, and I just noticed that the numbers are a little bit funny here. Um, the third item listed here of, of volunteering opportunities, um, this may seem counterintuitive to you because you know it's not necessarily in your field of work, but it's actually a really great place to meet people. I spoke earlier about the importance of the diversity of your network, and in volunteer opportunities, you really will meet people who are of different walks of life, different expertise. It's a great way to get your foot in the door and practice some soft skills as well that are so important for networking. And, and also uh, another reason why I love uh, volunteering is because it's a great way to um, establish, establish yourself with Canadian experience. So for those of you who are trying to figure out how to bridge some of your skills, um, volunteering is a great way to not only network, but also to show that you have some experience in Canada. So I really like that one. And then finally, um, the place where I, I feel like I do most of my networking, industry events and conferences. Um, I think there's a lot of great stuff going on in Canada right now. Lots of amazing events, depending on, again, your industry or your discipline. So be on the lookout for those events coming up um, and attend them. There's going to be a lot of industry leaders there, a lot of attendees, um, a lot of really, really interesting people that can open amazing opportunities. Um, I know Akshita has a story about this as well. Um, yeah, so one of those industry events, actually not industry events, it was more like a tech deal. Okay. So um, I met somebody from a very well-known like company, um, and then we just started talking, and um, we built up a connection. I added him on LinkedIn, and then it was just a 10 minutes chat, not even 10 minutes, I think. Um, and um, we resonated on a lot of common uh, common interests and passions. and I think after four months, I saw there was an opening and I reached out to the same person that turns out that he works in the same team. And that's how I got an interview or a, I got my foot in the door in that company. So yeah, it was a, actually a very successful event for me. Did not give results immediately, um, but it did pay off in the long run. That's really great. And I think what I love about that story is that it shows that networking isn't transactional. It isn't that you get something right away or ask for something and get it in return. It's about building a relationship. And then in the future, it may lead to an opportunity. So that's really great. Um, and now we're going to go into a little bit of tactics. So um, there's an art to both online and offline networking. So we'll, we'll tackle both of them, starting with online networking. Cool. So um, the next slide, um, it's basically, um, so online networking. Um, as I said before, it's important to build like your own brand or your 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 um, your own personality on social media, social networking websites, because that's what people will see when they first want to look you up. If you reach out to somebody, if you message them, I don't know, like in any Facebook group that you both are connected uh, on, and you reach out to him, and that person will hundred percent look you up, look you up on LinkedIn because that will tell them everything about about you that he wants to know. So. The first one really talks about having a very clear person state brand statement. Um, uh, the second point is basically just talking about um, how important it is to join online communities and be a part of an online community or group. Um, and online by online communities and group, I mean uh, meetup. Like meetup is a group. Like be a part of uh, different different kind of meetups. Um, be a part of uh, different groups on Facebook um be connected uh, be connected to people on um, different social media websites so um uh, even on linkedin follow people that you that you believe are successful and will you know will motivate you to reach your goal that's also important part um and then you can also improve your online presence by contributing to the contributing to uh, these social media websites like you can write an article on linkedin um, start a blog, WordPress, anything, and then uh, even, 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 you know what? Keeping active, like liking on specific articles, 
sharing the article or commenting on the articles that you believe are really, really good will show that you are, you keep up with the current affairs and you, and you actually believe in uh, the ideas or the uh, ideologies that are shared on the website. And in the end, of course, connect with people. Uh, yeah, uh, send out uh, invites and be, and we'll talk more about how to connect with people uh, on online networking sites. But yeah, connection is important. Awesome. Uh, on the next slide is a really important thing that we wanted to stress, and that's to keep things personal. Um, I think that we have gotten our fair share of connections and we've reached out to people, but it's very easy to, to tell if someone has sent out a generic message to you. Um, it's much easier to want to connect with someone on a personal level if it's personal. And it seems simple, but I think when we have access to so many different individuals, it's tempting to just want to send out the same message blast to everybody. But it's really this personal connection that makes it so much more powerful, especially when you're reaching out to a stranger that you likely haven't met before. And so on the next slide, we'll be going over an example of a really powerful um, personal opening. Um, uh, yeah, this I think this example is the perfect um, intro uh, or a perfect message that you can send to anybody over uh, any any website. Oh, sorry, any social media website like LinkedIn, because this talks about um, what topic you are interested in. It's very personal and inviting. And since you'll be talking about um, uh, what your experiences are and what and what made you message that message that person it's it also shows that there was some research done before sending the message that you took some time out to look at what the, what are the different projects the person worked on what are the interests and etc um, and it also so it's really important to have very clear questions and not not open-ended questions the more you the more the focus the questions are the better the reply will be if you want to if you want the person to reply to your message immediately it would be really really helpful if you keep it to the point and be very specific also you can uh, show that you have prior experiences or you have done prior research or something like that because it shows that you are uh, you have you have a value and the person can get something out of the meeting too so yeah and i think this example this example is perfect message that you can send out to somebody. Yeah, and, and feel free to, to look at this example, draw um, inspiration for it, of course, exchanging out all those bolded sentences for what would make sense for your introductions. Um, but this is a great template um, that, that you can definitely use. Um, switching gears now on the next slide, we're going to be talking about how to network um, in person or at events. We have a few tips for this. And of course, the art of networking at an event is different than what it would be like um, online because you'll be meeting in a, and with people in person. And so a couple tips that we have, again, we wanna stress that you should do your research. Um, especially at events like major industry events, you often get speaker bios, sometimes you'll even get attendee bios. Make sure you read through those so that you're doing a very targeted approach that you are able to make things personal so that if a speaker comes, you have a specific ask or a specific question for them and you aren't just trying to make conversation for the sake of making conversation. So definitely do your research. Um, the second bullet is to arrive early and that isn't a plug for arrive the product, although you definitely should check it out. Um, arrive early because it's always a good idea to at least show up a little, a little bit before the event starts or definitely at least on time. The reason why is for a couple a couple reasons. When you arrive early, um, you can get a good sense of the space. Um, so you could check out where it would be good to network, especially if you're a little bit nervous. Um, you could check out where to go and you get a good lay of the land. There's also gonna be, of course, the, organiz or the organizers there and they're gonna be really, really great to talk to. Um, Sometimes the speakers will be there early or a few other keen attendees. So it's always good to, to come a little bit sooner rather than later. Um, for me, when I arrive early, the first thing that I stake out is where the food and uh, the drinks are. And that's because it's also a great place, great place to network. Chatting with someone over um, the food is a, a really good casual way to, to start to break the ice. So I really like to do that. Um, the third, the third uh, point is to make eye contact and smile. And this is really important because uh, in North America, it's convention to do this. Making eye contact is a sign of trust. It's a sign of uh, being welcoming and, and smiling is a good way to show that you are a friendly, approachable person. Um, and so this is really, really imperative when you speak to people. 
Um, when you do talk to people, make sure that you're asking questions and actually listening. Don't be so focused on sharing your life story or trying to appear interesting. Be genuinely interested in the person. Um, and we'll go over in a little bit some icebreakers and some things you can talk about. But really, it's about trying to find a meaningful connection with somebody and not trying to create a transactional um, interaction. Um, don't forget at the end of your conversation to ask for contact information. This will allow you to then transfer this, um, this connection that you've made into the online world, hopefully get a coffee chat, um, and continue to build that relationship further. Um, I think we mentioned it earlier, but it's always a good idea to take a moment to reflect, think about, okay, what went well in that interaction? How could I network better? Is there, was I interrupting them too much? Was I too quiet? Um, take a moment to reflect because networking is a skill that you can refine over time. Um, and you want to you want to really improve these soft skills because even outside of networking, the ability to connect with someone will be really important even when you're interviewing for jobs, when you're in the workplace. So this is something that you really want to not take lightly. Um, and then finally, following up after you've connected on LinkedIn or another platform, make sure you shoot them a thanks, maybe throw in a, a little anecdote or something that you've that you've said when you met uh, together so that you can make it memorable. Um, and then if you if you feel like there is an opportunity to um, offer the ability to meet for a coffee and chat, um, and that again, like I said, will extend the relationship further. So this is, this is all very, very, um, very nice to hear in person, but I know that it can be quite intimidating. So we've compiled a couple icebreakers and questions that you can kickstart a conversation with when you're at the event. Um, yeah, I can totally relate to that because it's really hard to talk, just go up to a stranger and talk to him like, hi, but trust me, it will get better because you will realize that um, everybody is doing that and everybody is here to do that. Mm -hmm. So on the next slide, we'll see that we have a couple of icebreaker questions. Um, they, these are like very generic, but trust me, you don't have to stick to these. You can literally talk about anything. You can talk about the weather. You can talk about the Raptors game. Mm -hmm. I have talked about a very popular show, Game of Thrones, with somebody <laughs> because it was finale and everybody was like, oh, the whatever, like they had some different opinion about it. But yeah, so like take this one, for example, how did you hear about this event? It's such a common question. And it's it will it will start off a conversation, be like, hey, maybe I, maybe that person heard about it at his workplace or through a community or a group. And that's how you, you know, start to talk about other things. And yeah, I mean, um, on you don't have to stick to these, as I said before, you just have to be natural and be yourself and it's gonna be okay. And you'll find your own style as you as you go to network. So for me, like I shared earlier, I often talk about the food that's in yeah. front of us um, and then that will kickstart. I'm like, oh, and where, are you? so I'll, I'll make a comment about the food, we'll laugh probably. And then I'll say, oh, and what do you do? Yeah. Where are you from? And then that always starts the conversation. So we've just on the next slide summarized um, a couple of these pointers that we discussed, really just hitting it home, making sure that your online presence is polished so that if anyone were to look you up, because that's the day and age that we are in, and they'll be able to see your most professional self. Um, make sure you have specific goals and objectives for networking. Um, are you trying to look for new opportunities? Are you trying to learn more about a certain industry? Um, that will help guide what you're doing. Do your homework both online and offline. Um, you know, make sure that you are approaching people with a specific intention um, or something that you you have a specific ask for them uh, or a question so that you're not just um, wasting their time. But make sure that it's personal as well, because it's not a transactional relationship. Um, and then finally, um, you know, really taking a, a step back, figuring out what went well, what didn't go well so that uh, you can improve. For next time. Um, so we're nearing the end of this presentation. On the next slide, um, we just want to reiterate again uh, that Arrive Connections is really focused on helping you find your desired career faster. We know that it's a very, very um, overwhelming journey from the moment you get approved to when you land and settle in, and we want to be there throughout your journey supporting you. So if there's anything that we can do as Arrive or just even as ourselves, we're very happy to support you. Um. Cool. So um, this is um, the end of the webinar and we hope that you really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then one of the tips or the suggestions that we have would really work out for you in the next networking event and will help you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, ladies. Super informative, lots of pointers. Um, you went over it super fast. I hope everybody uh, was able to relate to it. Um, so everyone, we're going to start taking questions now. So I know there's a lot of you online. Um, if you keep your questions related to today's topic and keep them short, we will be able to take them quickly. So um, let's get started. Um, uh, Sadasvan has a question here, um, and a lot of our clients are probably not here yet, so they want to know how can they start networking well before even coming to Canada? That's a great question. So maybe I can kick it off and then um, pass it off to Akshita. So um, that's one of the reasons why we built Arrive actually is because we realized that there is very limited opportunity for networking. And often what we see is people sending messages to individuals on LinkedIn. So not intended to be a plug for Arrive at all, but if you join, you'll be able to network and meet with people who are in your field of work and have similar interests to you. I know that there's also um, a couple WhatsApp groups out there, um, other kind of organic groups, so not so much in the professional accreditation, but again, focus on building a meaningful connection. Unfortunately, what we see a lot of in pre-arrival is that a lot of people try to reach out and network um, with individuals here um, with the sole focus of finding a job and it's it's very evident sometimes when that is the case so i would say definitely try and find meaningful connections with people who are um, coming there's a cohort um, advantage to that it's sort of like going through school where you can lean on each other and support each other um, and then ask for introductions from from friends that have already landed use arrive as much as you can and then once you're here set up coffee chats and attend events right away so um, that would be my tips. I don't know if you have um, tips. No, I actually tried doing that before coming to Canada. I landed in 2017. And before that, I was trying to reach out to people who have done the same program or working in different industries. One of the issues with that is that um, if they don't see any value in return, people won't really reply. Um, because you are saying that, hey, I'm going to land in Canada. Would you, is it possible for you to reply, you know, have a small chat? I, uh, my response rate was uh, 20% like two out of every 10 people would actually reply to me, which is very less. And it's very disheartening because you're in India, you can't do anything. Um, so this is why I believe the network, the, the platform that I built is actually perfect because everybody over there is a newcomer mm -hmm. and they understand and they have been through the same process. So it will be easier for you to connect with them and understand what, what I mean, what can you do better to land a job in, uh, in your specific industry in the same, uh, in, in Canada. So um, yeah, that's why I believe it's better than uh, reaching out, cold, literally cold messaging people uh, from, for example, I was doing it from India and yeah. Awesome, thanks ladies. Um, next question here is, and I'm sure a lot of people have this question, you know, when people are new, um, they probably don't have, uh, they're not settled in yet, they don't have babysitters, so Adiola would like to know, can you bring a toddler to a networking event? It's a, it's a good question. Yeah, um, I would say that um, not advisable just because uh in net like during a networking event that's my opinion like you want to show your professional self and you want to give your hundred percent you want to get out of the one hour that you're spending at 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 in a meeting or spending at an event um you want to meet as many people as you can so um i know it's really hard um when you're new because you have children and responsibility so you can leave early like only spend a half an hour and then leave early but i don't think it's advisable to get a child yeah i think um i think it de it definitely depends on the nature of the event some of the more professional events true. i totally agree true, true. um i think for some of the more maybe casual meetups i think it, oh, that's yeah. okay um i actually think that one of the great things about networking is it's not necessarily limited to your career so why you could definitely attend um uh, a meetup with um, other moms, other newcomer moms, and then you may be able to find someone who can support when you're going to your career networking events, and then you can do the same for them. So it's about building a community as well. So I think for the professional events, uh, I agree with Akshita, it's, it's a bit challenging just because you want to be focused and you know, you want to, you want to demonstrate that you're able to, you know, work and, and do all those things if that's your intention. Um, but there's also a social um, community side of networking that I think would be really helpful in these kinds of situations because you haven't figured out exactly where everything is. So that, that would be a, 
Yeah, thank you. And another thing, um, just, you know, thinking about networking, like these ladies mentioned, doesn't always have to be professional. Um, you could go to um, maybe a daycare, talk to parents there, or if there's like a walk-in center where you can take your children all day, and every neighborhood just does have that. So mm -hmm. it's like the Ontario early years, I'm not sure what they're all called, but um, you can go in with your toddler and, you know, there'll be other moms over there as well who are probably on mat leave and have jobs. And, you know, it's a great way to network with them as well. Or your mm -hmm. kids school, picking up your children or attending meetings with parents. Great way to meet other people as well. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So next question here is. Um, OK, so at a networking event, are you supposed to be handing out resumes to people? a great question i would say no unless it's a job fair where people are accepting <clears throat> resumes um, i've had a few people hand resumes to me yeah. um, at events as well and it feels a bit odd because again when we go back to um, things being um, focused on building a personal connection in a relationship as opposed to a transactional one sometimes when someone hands you a resume your immediate feeling is oh this person wants a job for me um, so unless you're going to a job fair where, you know, there are booths for people accepting resumes, I would advise not to. And I would advise to focus on how can I learn from this person? Um, how can I create a personal connection with them? And then it's only down the road later after you've followed up and connected that you can say, and are there openings and would it be okay for you to take a look at my resume? In Canada, things are done a bit softer. So you definitely don't want to be um, so up in somebody's face right in the first interaction. Yeah. I 100% agree with that. Uh, you can, of course, connect the person over LinkedIn, and that's kind of your online resume. So if you want to, so reach out to the person after the network, like after the event, and be like, "Hey, was wondering if you can meet for a coffee chat." And you can have a copy of your resume just in case if the conversation is going in that direction, and you're talking about, you know, how can you improve your resume, how can you present it better, and the person asks for it like during a coffee chat, not to a you know, networking event, then you can show it to it, show it to him. Otherwise, it's uh, it's not advisable and you really won't get a chance to really talk in depth about your resume. It's just mm -hmm. a two minutes chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Om here. Um, what's the right time and method to connect with people when you are outside of Canada? Like, for example, if he plans to move to Canada within the next four months, when should he start connecting with people? as soon as possible because as I said <laughs> that uh, you cannot expect everybody to reply so you need to start reaching out to people yeah right. um, yeah go ahead yeah I, I definitely agree like I think um, things move a little bit slower before you arrive in Canada so there's no harm in starting um, again if the focus is not necessarily just getting um, expecting a job immediately. Yeah. I think it's about starting to nurture those relationships early on. So um, don't feel any pressure that you have to all of a sudden create this expansive <laughs> network before arriving, but it doesn't, it never hurts to reach out to it's even one or two people who you're able yeah. to build a deep connection with, um, that will make all the difference. Thank you. Um, next question here from Ezra. Is, is it acceptable to approach strangers on LinkedIn uh, to connect before we land? So do you have to know these people that you're trying to connect with or can they be complete strangers? And is that OK? Is it acceptable? Um, so my my take on this is it's it's definitely acceptable to connect with strangers. I think it's, again, the, the method and the strategy in which you do so. So I often sometimes will connect with strangers on LinkedIn, even not as a newcomer, because you know, there's something that they're doing that I'm interested in. Um, the, the best way to do it on LinkedIn, I found, is through warm introductions. So if you have someone in common that can create an introduction for you. Sometimes that's not the case and you have to cold message people. I think that having a specific ask, so messaging someone not just because, you know, they happen to be um, in the field of work, it's, it's almost too generic for you to connect. But if, let's say, I'm really, really interested in a certain company or I'm really interested in learning how, you know, they do their research at this one institution, then it gives me a targeted approach. It all goes back to doing your research. Why am I messaging you? Is it just because I want to learn as much as I can from everybody, in which case it's not as personal and I'm less likely to respond? Or is it that, you know, there's something very specific that we connect on that you could actually share with me and then when I arrive, I could... Um, I could learn from you and we can work together. So I think it's definitely okay to connect with strangers, but be very um, focused and methodical um, and personal in the way that you do it. 
I don't know if you would agree. I 100% agree with mm-hmm. that because uh, I also get a lot of um, invites or message requests from people that I don't really know when I have done that. I've called message to people. Um, the best way, as Trisha said before, is actually to draft a very, very um, simple message, which is very personal, very focused, and it talks about what do you, why are you connecting with the person. Just adding three, four lines in the invite will help you, uh, will help the other person to know why he should add you to his network and will help you understand um, like what are people, what, how, is it working for you or not? Like, don't keep it generic, be very specific. Thank you. Um, Mo has a question here. When you meet somebody at an event, should I ask them for a job opportunity directly? Definitely not. Um, you definitely don't want to be that upfront. Again, it, it feels too transactional. Um, I think the way that you can get around it, if, especially if you're interested in, in finding a job, which is makes sense and is expected, is to say, Um, Could I learn more about, um, tell me more about where you work and what is the culture like? Are there any opportunities available? What kind of skills are you looking at? So kind of getting at, you know, is there some, are you even looking? What would it take to be someone at that, uh, at that job? Again, like that could be a conversation depending on how you relate in your first interaction. Sometimes it, it is pushed to the second interaction. Sometimes that first interaction is just getting to know the person, understanding what exactly they do at their job, telling them a little bit about yourself. Um, not overwhelming them and in the second interaction then you can kind of get out okay and and are there open openings and how did you find a job there um but definitely definitely not uh, in your first interaction saying can i have a job thank you um and yalda has a question here how can you choose the right person for networking like should She's a web designer, wants to know, should I be connecting with people who have the same job title as me or should I be um, connecting with people with a higher uh, position or people who are in the field or people who are not even in the field? So, or just in a company that she wants to work at? Um, Actually, there is, according to me, there is no right answer because um, a connection is a connection and you are, when you're connected with somebody, you have access to their network. So for example, if I am interested in RBC, then I would try to, of course, reach out to people working in the same industry as I am in, like analytics. And I will try to be like, hey, so what kind of work you do and all. But I will also not limit myself to that because um, you never know if I'm, if I'm connected to somebody in marketing, you never know that person already knows somebody in analytics. And going through one person to another, if a person is making an introduction for you, is actually 100 times better than you reaching out to that person directly because that person is a spokesperson for you now. He or she can talk about you to the other person. That makes it, and it also like will make the other person respond to your message or meeting invite faster. Um, so yeah, it, there is no, like op- be open to, people like be open to opportunity yeah i totally agree and i think that um that slide that we had that outlined all the different places to network that's why it's so great to have diversity because yes it's very very good to uh, network with people in your industry the same title as you higher title as you because the people who are in the same job as you they can um you can learn from each other you can sh- you can look at each other's resumes you can share tips if someone hasn't gets a job faster they can refer you Someone who is a little bit higher than you can advise you on, oh, this is what where you should go. They have a little bit um, of a lay of the land that they can help you with. But even like actually just said, people who have no relation to your field at all. I've seen so many jobs where this person knows this person who referred another person and it could be very, very different fields. So make sure that you're not, and, and, and that's where it's about not transactional relationships because the more open you are to connecting with someone that you have a good relationship with, the more likely it is that that person will be that spokesperson for you and, and vouch for your skills. Thank you. Um, Erica has a good question here too. Do I have to offer something in exchange in order to convince the other person to uh, informational interview through LinkedIn? Um, I don't think so. I don't think you need to offer anything in return, but I do think that if you are you know, reaching out to someone for um, a, a coffee chat, for example, something that I will say is like, I would love to buy you a coffee because you know I'm asking for your time, I'll, I'll buy you a coffee, but you don't have to offer a material exchange of, of 
of anything. Yeah, like um, <laughs> that, I agree with that um, because everybody has been through this. So they are more than happy to help you out. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're doing something out of the blue, like I'm reaching out to this person. No, that person also reach out to somebody. Mm -hmm. And it's a process that everybody goes through. So they know about it. So you have to like send some material gifts or something. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and I mean, it's just, it's about building a relationship with that person, even if it's on LinkedIn. Maybe that person has been sharing some articles or sharing something that they are proud of or something, maybe, and you know, you can maybe like these or comment on them and then have a conversation about these all the time uh, to them, just to kind of build an online relationship of a kind of, you know, like a friendship. And then if you feel like, you know, you're talking maybe once a week or you're commenting on their status or something like that, um, you already given something to them. Mm -hmm. So in that way, but nothing like these ladies said, nothing material in exchange. Um, for a coffee chat. Um, Smriti has a question for Akshita here, wants to know how lo long did it take you to land a job after landing in Canada since, uh, you know, networking is a very long process? Um, so I came to Canada to do my master's. So after my uh, eight months of studies, I was supposed to do a co-op for four months. So the co-op was actually, I got this co-op through a resume book that is sent out to partner companies. Uh, I went to Shulik, so they sent out the resume book. But after my co-op, um, it took me, um, I started looking for a job immediately because I knew that it's going to take a long, a long time. So I think um, three months or two, two months, something, two months, two, three months, uh, I reached out to people, started connecting with people. And it also depends on the time of the year also because I my co-op was summer co-op so a lot of people are on vacation or they don't have time because you know it's summer and once you land in Canada you know how important summer is <laughs> so um, yeah so I'll say two two and a half months or three months and then I got a job like immediately after the co-op. Thank you. Um, Mo has a question here. Um, so let's say he's going to a, a networking event and he happens to see how many people or who is attending. Would it be awkward for him to message someone on LinkedIn in advance? Let's say he wants to meet him or looking forward to seeing them there at the event. I don't think it's awkward at all. I think um, if you can do it in a way that we outlined, which is personal and shows that you have put some thought into it, I think it's totally fine to say, I wouldn't overwhelm the person with all the information. I, I think I would just say, hey, um, I noticed that we're going to this event um, and I'm, I'm really interested in your work and blah, 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 what, whatever it is. Um, it would be great for us to, to meet for 30 minutes at the event. So you've already planned that this person will be there and you'll set some time to meet at the event. And then that way, that person, it shows that person you have initiative that you and then that you've secured them for some time. And then that kind of is a good groundwork for um, your subsequent relationship. Perfect, thank you. And Arrive, um, is this an online platform? Is this something people can come and meet you in person or is it only in the GTA? Yeah, that's a great question. Arrive um, is an online platform. It's a website, so you can go to arriveconnections.com for, um, for this application we talked about. Um, we also have a gen general um, content site, arrivein.com, and that will kind of cover all things across life, career, and finance. Um, and so we have a, that online platform, but once you're actually in Canada, um, we have uh, events and we also host our own webinars um, that you can attend uh, in person or online. We're currently focused uh, for the offline stuff in the GTA, but we're looking at an expansion plan um, over the next couple of months. So hopefully we'll be hosting events across Canada pretty soon. Awesome. So, Charles, I hope that answered your question as he's landing in Calgary. Um, okay. Next question is for New from Newport. Um, wants to know how can I find out where all these networking events are happening? Great question. Um, so, there are so many ways that you can find out about these networking events. The best one would be um, LinkedIn. Uh, because that would be really specific to your industry. You would be connected to people who are already going to the events. Uh, the second would be meetups, like uh, machine, like I, I am, since I'm an analytics, so I'm already in the meetup groups related to machine learning or data science, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to just browse and you'll know. 
also um, a lot of events I, I get to know through uh, my network. So, um, because I am connected, majorly I'm connected to people who are in analytics, so they would share a post or they would message me directly, hey, there's an event that I think it would be uh, interesting that you, would, you could attend. Um, and yeah, and, and like, that's, that's how I get to know about events. Yeah, I think um, there's a, definitely a discovery phase. So that's where aggregator tools like meetups, uh, Eventbrite, where a lot of yeah. events are, um, a lot of the ticketing is yeah. done through them. At first, you're kind of just looking for general terms that are related to your industry. And then what happens, and this is what happened to me when I moved, I moved from Vancouver to Toronto. So I also didn't have a network locally. Um, but you start to meet people at those events and then they're like, oh, and have you heard of this one? And then you start to understand what the ecosystem is looking like. Every city also has different, um, different places where there's a lot of events. So in Toronto, for example, there's something called the Mars Discovery District. And so they host a lot of events. So you get to know about that aggregator and then you discover other ones through that. So it's, um, you know, the start with the general, um, general websites, meetups, LinkedIn and Eventbrite, and then kind of explore as you go there. And, and I've had people ask me like, where do you go to find these events at, at the events themselves? Yeah. And so um, everyone, like actually just said, is very, very, very willing to help. Um, so, so that's, those are great places to start. Thank you. Um, next question here is from Daryl. Um, so he's been uh, going to a lot of networking events and got a lot of contact information from people there and they wanted, they had given him permission to follow up with them, but he's tried several times following up with them and he hasn't gotten any response. So he wants to know if he should give up on contacting these people or just keep on trying. Yeah, I mean, if, and again, this is not this is not just a situation that is exclusive to newcomers to Canada. I'm always cold emailing people, and um, some people reply, some people don't reply. I think I give it um, I give it a few a few interactions. I try to message them. I try to follow up. If I if I've messaged them five or so times and they haven't responded, I usually move on just because the the amount of time and effort it takes to try and reach out with that one individual. Um, I could be expanding into other people that may reach out to me. So it, it always depends. It's not like a hard set five number and then I'm done. It usually try to see how long it's gone on and how badly I want to talk to this person. Is there someone like them? Is there, if you know, they're very high up, is there someone that works for them that I can talk to, that I can find my way again, trying to find a middle person that maybe if I'm trying to cold email somebody or cold message somebody, um, if I were to get an introduction, maybe I have a much easier time. So um, it really depends, but I would say if it's been a long time, I would, I would personally move on and, and try to either find an alternate person or an alternate path. Thank you. Serena has a question. So once you've connected with someone on LinkedIn, like how do you really move, you know, forward? Like what's the first message that you can send someone? I know you mentioned that you can uh, need to personalize that message according to their profile or, you know, how, what you want from them. But is there any other tips that you can give to people? Because I know it, when people in that situation, they're trying anything and everything. So any other tips you can give us? Um, I would, um, I have something to say to that. So um, once you're connected on LinkedIn and this is your first message, uh, my suggestion would be to not, like I've seen this so many times, to not include a very long introduction about yourself. Right. Since you are already connected on LinkedIn, that person can go and look at your profile and it probably will. So be very specific. Hey, thank you for accepting my request. Um, I see that you have worked in this, 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 this project or you've worked on this, 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 this. I am really interested in knowing more about it. I have some background in this field as well. So let me know what time, like we can talk over phone or, you know, it depends on what you want of the, in, um, the message as well. So generally, like I say that, uh, let me know if, this, uh, if we can chat for like a couple of minutes over phone or we can meet over coffee. That's it. Very brief and yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I think that um, the goal of LinkedIn is not necessarily to carry on these long, long, long conversations on the platform. It's about, you know, if you have a specific objective, that's really where it's best because it doesn't make sense to try and collect new connections on LinkedIn. It's about, I'm interested in learning about this. Would you be able to, would you be able to meet with me or speak with me on the phone? And that's kind of the next step of, of 
that conversation. Thank you. Great advice. I'm glad that question was asked. <laughs> um, uh, so, okay, so some people are asking, you know, how can we join Arai? What's the process? Do you think you ladies could send me a little bit of information right after the webinar so I can email it uh, along with the recording? Absolutely. Yeah, we'd be very happy. Right. So right after the webinar, um, they'll send me what is needed. So a little, I guess, a blurb about uh, Arrive and how to sign up and what to expect. And I will include that with your recording uh, after the webinar as well. Awesome. Um, Great. All right. So just looking through the questions here. Okay, so Kapil has another like, good question here. Say, I, it's pretty much you've answered it. Um, he's saying, when you send a request on LinkedIn, um, there's a limited word limit. So it's, it's um, I forget how many characters there are, but you know, trying your elevator pitch will not really fit in there. So <laughs> what's the best thing to say over there? Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, like for myself, I will often um, do a quick introduction on LinkedIn. I think what I've seen some people do because there's a character limit is they'll do like several paragraphs. Um, I'll usually just do a, a quick um, introduction. Sometimes I'll even say, hey, um, and of course the nature of my asks are different sometimes, but I'll say, uh, I see that you're working in this. I'm really interested in learning about it. Would I be able to send you an email? Um, and then because email, you can have a little bit more long form um, if I have a very specific ask. Um, I'll do that. But otherwise, like what she just said, try to keep it short and sweet. It's not about an elevator pitch. You're not pitching yourself. It's really about why, what you want to get across is why are you reaching out to me mm -hmm. and what can I do for you in a way that isn't so, um, so much work because the reality is everybody is also very busy. They get a lot of requests. So if they think that they can answer your question quickly or easily, um, they're more likely to respond. So I wouldn't actually uh, jump into an elevator pitch. Um, because like actually just said, you can see it on your LinkedIn profile. That's why it's so important to have your online presence uh, polished. It's more about, I'm reaching out to you for this reason. Um, and I'm just seeking this very, very small piece. Um, could you, could we connect? Um, and that's really the, the main call to action. Um, I totally agree with what Trisha said, because um, I have been on both, both sides. When I was reaching out to people, it was different. And now when people are reaching out to me, it's different and i have seen how, how people react so when i'm on the other side when people are reaching out to me it, i want to help everyone but if you on uh, if your message is too long or if you're asking if you're if the questions are very open-ended i i cannot take a lot of it, like it will take a lot of effort from my side to reply to everything so that's why um, you need to be as i said before you need to be very specific hey i I'm reaching out to you or I, I would want to know more about the field of work or I think we have something in common. So would appreciate if you, if, if you accept my request. And once they have accepted your request, you can send a bigger message and be like, yeah, see that you worked on this project. Uh, does it relate to this and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Yes, don't keep your questions so open-ended because, I mean, you know, they don't have time to type in a whole paragraph for you as well. And, I mean, it's not like these people are nice enough to respond, take their time out um, to talk to you. It's not like customer service and they have to get back to you. So you know, maybe, I think maybe change your mind frame a little bit, not expecting them to respond just because you've messaged them. So I know we're, we're we're used to great customer service, especially with RBCs. Like you ask a question and they're going to respond back, but this is not the case, right? Mm -hmm. So um, great advice. Thank you so much, ladies. Um, next question here was, oh yeah, actually thought you could probably help answer this as well. How do you choose the right place for co-op placement or is it even a choice for you? Um, so that's a good question actually um a co-op is like a very safe option it's before your job right so it depends on what stage you are in um like if you're an undergrad and uh, you're looking for a co-op or um, you want to switch like if you're an undergrad and looking for co-op i think you can basically go by your interest like i am interested in marketing but i am a concept person so let me just try marketing uh, let me just do a four-month co-op and that I, I'll know if I like it or not. 
Um, but if you are a professional and looking to switch careers or you are a master student and you want to um, get a co-op, then it's a little bit different because then you need to understand that um, co-ops are generally catered to university students. So getting one is already will be really difficult. If you're a professional, you need to look for internships and not co-ops. And, uh, and if you're looking for a job after a co-op, then you, you have to make a decision like if it's not related to your field of work, but it's, and it's, to, it's a uh, put in the door to an organization, then I would accept it. Like it's, it's not, a, I can't answer it straight because it really depends on what situation you are in. Yeah, I think um, I did co-op back in my undergrad and the thing that they told me is because co-op is so short, it's a great opportunity to learn what you don't like. So being more open-minded in co-op, not necessarily saying like, I must work in this industry yeah. and do this thing. It's a great way to just learn what uh, what you don't like, but also put your skills um, put your skills out there, put them to the test and, and grow new ones. So with co-op, I would say um, there's a little bit less pickiness than there might be with a regular job. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so co-op is not something that's open to everyone. It's if, if you're going through school or university and it's part of your program, that's when you would get it. So it's not like um, RBC doesn't have a co-op program for newcomers. Like you'll have to go to school. Or is there one? I, I know that they have something. Yeah. So um, there's a program called Career Edge. Yeah. Um, Career Edge. And yes. Career Edge. And so it's not. Um, it's it's sort of like a co-op program, but. Um, basically, there's like a shorter term placement specifically for newcomers, um, and they do do placements at RBC as well. Um, but they're like you said, it's it's primarily intended for people who are going through school, so international students um, and then other domestic students. Um, I haven't seen much co-op programs just specifically for newcomers, but yeah, very much. Uh, not co-ops. Then, if you are a newcomer, then look for internships. They're a bit different from co-op. Co-op is actually a program between an organization and a university, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are not a lot of opportunities uh, for internships, mm -hmm. but there are some. So if you are looking for one, you can, um, or you can talk to people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah, you, they, you'll find uh, internships. Yes, but definitely check out careeredge.com. Um, mm -hmm. We've been working them for years and years, and it's great. So check it out, um, and you can probably read about it all over their website as well. Um, it is to uh, the end of our webinar. Well, that was a lot of fun, and thank you, ladies, so much for answering so many questions. Um, it was great. I know I feel like we've answered almost everyone's question here. Um, before I move on to my slides, is there anything that you'd like to add? No, thank you so much for having us and hopefully it was helpful. We'll share information about Arrive and again, if there's anything that we can do to support, we're, we're, that's what we're here for. Thank you so much. So if you can bear with me for the next uh, few minutes, just want to make sure that um, a lot of people were asking questions about resume writing and um, interview tips and all of that. So sorry, we were not able to answer all of those questions. We wanted to focus on networking today, but you can check out our website and go to click on e-access and there's tons of tiles over here. So if you're looking for resume advice, interviews, networking as well, it's all over there. We've got past webinars uh, posted on here. Um, there's other blogs and resources that you can check out as well. So go to our website, accessemployment.ca, um, and click on e-access right there. Um, our next uh, webinar with RBC is on August 13th, so I know it's a bit far, but we want to tell you about it right now. So it's about understanding the Canadian recruitment process. So a lot of the questions that you had today about hiring and resumes and all of that will be most proper, probably answered during this webinar. So as soon as the webinar is up, you can sign up. And our next webinar, just with um, access that's coming up, is um, Jumpstart Your a career with um, in Canada so that's on August 15th and uh, check them out as well so that's gonna be well actually we had Connell Valentine coming in earlier as well he's a Canadian career coach at zero to hired um, so check him out and you can check out their website as well it's called zero to hire.com 
Um, oh, and I was going to talk about pre-arrival. So if you are on your way to Canada and you have your PRs um, and you're landing within the next two months plus, you might be eligible for our CEC, Canadian Employment Connections program. And if you fall under any of these sectors, so engineering, finance, HR, IT, sales and marketing, supply chain, or entrepreneurship. So if you're interested in opening up your own business when you land in Canada, um, you can email cec at accessemployment.ca and they will tell you what to do next and see if you're eligible or not. And add us on Instagram. So we are very much active on our social media. Now we are also on Instagram. Um, if you want to know what's happening at Access, whether it's in-house um, or if it's um, in online, whatever it is, you will see it on our social media. You probably won't see it on our website because it's not updated every day, but our social media is. So check us out on uh, whether it's uh, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And thank you again for joining. It was a great turnout. Thank you ladies so much for all the great advice and tips that you gave to our clients today. We really appreciate it. And I hope we can have you guys come back and uh, tell us again how Arrive is doing. Okay. All right. So thank you, everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful day or evening ahead. If uh, you're off tomorrow for some reason, have a happy long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.